Yo, this is the Ancient Texan News Podcast. Got three big stories today that I can tell of. He got the patent on vaccines, pandemic story. Got Cheney being ousted at the White House. And you've got uh, Israelis bombing Palestinians. I think I'm gonna do the vax vaccine first. Uh, there's a movement at the World uh, Health Organization to suspend the patents which uh, on the vaccines, which Biden has agreed with. Uh, and, and the core issue is how do you get vaccines to Africa, India, a whole lot of other places. And there's, there's two, two groups of people that need patents. And I was kind of arbitrary distinction but those that are actually capable of making vaccines, and India is one of the, the countries that has a quite advanced uh, pharmaceutical industry. I get uh, some little blue pills from there for being an old guy. You can figure that one out. And then you have countries, um, which would take most of the countries in Africa, that even if they had rights to a patent, they don't really have the capability or know-how uh, to make the drugs. And the World Health Organization has like 165 people that have to vote and it has to be not unanimous to suspend the patents. So that, that's not gonna happen. This is background noise crap. Now, here's a, to me, kind of a mind boggling thing. The US, which has may, way more vaccines than it can use and will use, they'll go old being held by the US. Um, we have a law that prohibits the export of vaccines from the US to countries that need it. Because of course, our people are more important. The U.S. is having the problem of getting people to show up for vaccines, and it's got more vaccines than it needs, even if people showed up. And we have a law preventing vaccines from being shipped to places that really need them, like most of Africa is 1%. Consequences are we're going to keep the pandemic alive, going around in circles and coming back to us via airplanes. And we'll have periodic waves of the pandemic uh, coming around for the rest of my lifetime. I know you don't believe that, but it looks to me like uh, the course that the world is taking, pretty much selfish, self-centered course, um, is going to have that consequence. Now, whether we suspend the vaccine or not, that's not the main issue because Moderna, for instance, has said they're not going to prosecute anybody that breaks their patents and nobody started using Moderna's process. Why is that? It, it's know-how. You can't just in the middle of, uh, you know, the lions and elephants walking by, set up a lab and make, you uh, and maybe that's a little derogatory, I apologize for that. But it's just a sophistication that most countries in Africa and a lot of the world do not have to make the vaccine. And talking about a patent is just a uh, red herring. Um, and even if, if patent was the issue, patents can be, you can 
buy a license to use a patent. And most companies, it's only a question of price. So that that could be negotiated, but that that's not the issue. Um, the issue is it's going to take money and commitment to get vaccines to Africa, India, et cetera. Uh, and nobody's stepping up to the plate and getting the billions of dollars that it would take to do that. And you can put up a bunch of red herring arguments, but that's, it comes down to money and comes down to the belief that Americans are more important and their lives are more important. <clears throat> Is that oversimplifying it? Probably. Now, let's skip over to Israel. I look, listened to Al Jazeera and they were interviewing a, a guy that's running for the, the government of Israel. And they, he talked about uh, a woman in a wheelchair had been bombed uh, or been hit by a rocket and killed by the uh, Hamas. And that the blood is on the hands of, of all Palestinians. And then the guy asked him, what about the 14 children that have been killed by bombs from Israel? And he said, well, the Hamas caused that too because Hamas hides in, you know, churches and hospitals and apartment buildings. Um, and so Hamas is the ones that killed the 14 children. Um, well, first the body count will be of Palestinians killed will be 10 times the body count of Israel. It, I've looked at it before. And it's up to like 70 times. So basically, the, the Israel is much more powerful. Israel has the option of going in with troops and military and taking out the leaders um, of the Palestinians. But they in, instead choose to drop bombs. The U.S. condemns the rockets by Hamas, but not the bombs dropped by Israel. Or the acts provoking uh, the Palestinians. The main thing is Palestinians are being uprooted from their home and the homes are being given to Jews. That would piss me off. People can't leave Gaza where the bombs are being dropped because they're in a prison there that's maintained by Israel. So Israel has them in a fenced in prison and then drops bombs on them. That doesn't seem quite fair to me. Will the US take any position? Will Biden step in, make even make a derogatory comment toward Israel? And if he does, what kind of backlash will he get? No. It comes back to the same principle. U.S. lives are more important. Uh, Israeli lives are more important. Um, Palestinian lives are not so important. That's the, that's the fundamental principle that we're working on here that I can see. That's the, that's the value system that we have. Uh, and you can get into the nitty gritty, but uh, Israeli is powerful. Palestinians are weak and disadvantaged. Um, and the Israelis have an iron thumb on top of them and have for a long time. I should post to my blog or podcast site a link to an article that shows the seven layers of citizenship or residence um, in Israel. And now the final item is Cheney's getting kicked out and a uh, very young congressman uh, is is taking her place. Okay, Liz Stefanik, Stephanie, 
She's a young Republican from New York, um, came in as a bipartisan, and switched over to be a Trump loyalist. Uh, it's probably going to take her place. I don't think she's done anything to merit, so let's not waste time on her. So Liz, Liz Cheney is, um, I'm not sure it's that significant that she's getting ousted. Um, what's significant is that Republicans and the public, not just, it's not just the Republicans in power. Republicans that you walk and meet down the street is supporting the Trump lie. And you'd like to say, well, there's no way in hell I would be a Republican and support such lies. But let's look at how people work. People have an emotional reaction first and then they rationalize it. And if you were a Republican listening to Fox News, you said, well, I wouldn't be listening to Fox News. Well, that's because you haven't been indoctrinated. You're indoctrinated with MSN, MSNBC, Rachel Maddow, et cetera. If you're a Republican and heard Fox News and on Facebook, all your friends were Republicans and all the news that you got was about Republicans. Um, you probably don't believe it, but uh, you would believe that the election got stole um, by the Democrats. There's a crazy thing going on in uh, Arizona where the Senate of Arizona has taken the ballots from Maricopa County, two million of them, hired a private company, and the guy running the company has avowed, you know, that he's a Trumper, so not very neutral. They don't have the usual standards set in place and they're recounting the ballots in Maricopa County. Now, if you're a Republican, you're gonna believe, yeah, we recounted them and there's something wrong. If you're a Democrat, you're gonna believe, well, you got a, bi a biased group of people with unproven procedures, poor security measures um, that overturned the that, you know, it was never a fair process to begin with. Those are stories that both sides have, but both sides, you're hearing the more the democratic side of the story. Uh, if you were immersed in the Republican side of the story, you'd have to be a pretty astute person uh, to pick up the subtleties of how uh, or maybe even no, we don't really know. You'd be hearing the story of how well, they're doing an excellent job. And when they did it, they found these 40,000 votes flown in from uh, Venezuela. In fact, some of the Republicans said um, they're looking for bamboo in the ballots, which is a reference to a tropical country and Think the ballot's been contaminated by bamboo. It, it's some serious shit. Pardon my language. You know, you look at a place like Italy, um, Italy, Germany, and Hitler. Well, Mussolini in Italy. But if you're told the same lie over and over and you don't hear the other side and you're surrounded by people that tell you the same lie and that your friends and your family telling you the same lie, most people go along with the lie. That's just the way it is. Um, the media companies are a major part of the lie spreaders. Um, Facebook has algorithms that are definitely a part of the The lie. So this with with Shaney and you know January sixth is a a lot more than just uh, who leads the Republicans. We've got a breach 
of truth, we've got set up a system that deliberately constructs stories and immerses people in those stories. And we get the result that you would expect. You immerse people in stories and they believe it. And I'm immersed for the most part in the democratic story. I, I went and listened to Al Jazeera on uh, the Israeli conflict just to kind of have a little better, little better balance. But I'm, I'm immersed in it. And from that position, it is very difficult for me to pick out what things I'm being hoodwinked on. Because I, the way my system works is I hear something and if it's comfortable with me and it doesn't cause any, you know, stomach flare up or, you know, that doesn't feel, if I don't have a negative gut reaction, I just tick it off. I heard something I agree with, tick it off. Heard something I agree with, tick it off. I hear something I don't agree with, I, you know, pay a little more attention. But I've been immersed in the democratic sermon, propaganda, American propaganda, American elitism, America, the best in the world at what, you know, we're pretty good at killing each other with guns. I think we're the best at that. Although there's a few, you know, companies, countries that supply us drugs who have got the same ailment. So, you know, we're the best at making money. I'd even give us that. Best of taking care of our poor? Nah. Best of taking care, giving our weaker people a hospital? Best at educating our poor? Best at, you know, dealing with the race issues? Nah, we're not the best at that, but you just say, well, that's not what we want to be best at. We're best at the things that are most important. We're part of the propaganda machine and in ourselves, our biological system only flares up stuff that, that we only pay attention to things that, you know, it's different than our, our programming. And you can be read and educated, and I think you can minimize that. And maybe the uneducated, which kind of flock to Trump, are more prone to that. Um, but it's still this idea that we're free of programming and uh, biases is just not true. Now, how do we set up a world that everyone gets exposed to both points of view? Do we make things like the algorithms on Facebook illegal? Apple was cutting off Facebook's al algorithms. That's a whole nother story. Um, it's making a major move in that direction. Think about it. If, how many people use Apple phones and all of a sudden Facebook can't follow what they do when they're on not only Facebook site, but other sites. Should this right of privacy be extended to your phone? Do you have that right? Do you, get, do you care? I think it's a major, um, major thing to getting our freedoms back. It's not just your privacy that's at issue because I don't have that many things that I care about. It's the ability to track you across networks and then use that information to influence primarily what you buy, but also what you think. It's algorithms being used to alter your brain. And to think that you're immune from that is just being stupid. 
you are impacted by those algorithms. Your life is impacted. And what's even worse is you don't even know what's happening to you. I, I said I was just going to do three stories, but there's too much good stuff here. FBI has identified the group that hit the pipeline. It's a group that uh, probably operates out of Russia, but they do it mainly for money. And we talked about how insurance pays for cyber attacks. And so we've set up a big business in America to fund the hackers. But I want you to think about where this is going. This is shutting down the gasoline pipeline. It's been shut down for four days. But what if it was if it was your electric company? What if it's your gas company in the middle of winter? What it, what is that going to feel like? Cyber security is a big deal. Uh, Israel or the U.S. shut down um, Iran's centrifuges that make nuclear fuel back about five years ago, came in through the internet, made the centrifuges spin really fast and break down. That set them back for probably six months. That same technology of hacking and you just need one little weak system and they're constantly probing these systems. Um, to have your electric company shut down, have your gasoline shut off, have your natural gas shut off, having your bank account erased. Do you see Congress allocating any kind of money to deal with this? This, this is not gonna be just like a passing thing that goes away. This is a the war of the future. China and Russia, I'm sure, tap into our government systems and they have. I mean, there's plenty of documented cases and I'm sure we're not advertising, but we're tapping into their systems. That same technology can be used in an offensive manner, not just to get information, but to shut down things in the United States. And we can shut down things their country. We're not interested either. Everybody has pretty much been holding those cards uh, close to their vest. China hasn't, you know, shut down Los Angeles when it gets pissed off at California. But it probably could. And we kind of live with this um, don't burn down my bridges and I won't burn down your bridges, but we're living in a world that could be shut off. The big elephant in the room. Do you see any admission of that? Yeah, like Biden says, yeah, oh, you shouldn't do that. Well, what the crap good does that do? We're in a kind of a, you know, arms race and there's a little bit of truce because you don't want to turn that loose on both both sides because I mean that that would wake people up let's wait till something's really important going on anyway that's my two cents about the cyber attacks and I'm sure the ransomware is being paid and you know the pipeline will get turned back on and everybody will think this is wonderful and we'll move on Here's one more little story. China is forcing birth control on Muslim women in Zhenyang. I'm sure I didn't say that right. It's ironic that China uh, fertility rates down to 1.2. Their population's gonna hit a peak here in a few more years and then it's gonna go south. And that's a huge problem for a country that's not uh, got very much of a financial buffer. And it's 
kind of exaggerated by China's one child policy. You know, unintended consequences. And now they're slowing down Muslim births. That's a very clear, you know, sign they want to China people to all have the same bloodline. It it's a it's a moral issue. It's a racist issue. Um, will we speak out a bit out against it? Probably not. Does anybody really care? No, because you go back to this principle that American lives are more important and Muslim women, China, not so important. And I got one little last comment. Biden says unemployment must, unemployed must accept job offers. We've got this really weird thing going on. We had a jobs report where less than 300,000 people, uh, new jobs were created for less than 300,000 people. Well, we've got still millions of people out of work, like 8 million or some big number than before the pandemic. You've got businesses trying to hire people, especially restaurants. And there's a couple of factors there. They don't pay very well. And then you got people at home getting unemployment checks. Now, as a democratic party, you either have to push through higher pay uh, for workers in general to get them go to back to work or you don't give as big unemployment checks. The combination of giving big unemployment checks and not pushing through minimum wage changes results in a lot of people sitting at home. And why does it matter? Well, they're at home getting checks and the restaurant doesn't open because our our economy is kind of a momentum thing. Uh, success in one area feeds success in another area. If the restaurant doesn't open and the people don't go back to work, then you know, people don't go back to the offices because the restaurants next to them are not open. Um, you don't get kids back in school, then the People don't have anyone to keep their kids. Um, it's kind of like you got to levitate the whole system at, at one time. And it's really pretty amazing that it all works as well as it does and keeps going. But it can also fall apart. Um, I noticed the supply chain and my Walmart is still screwed up. My daughter went there to get a little paint for her art class or some kind of class that she has in college. And you know, the little uh, watercolors and that kind of stuff and pins that paint, they were uh, basically out of the whole lot of that. I notice a lot of the dog food that I try to buy comes back. Sometimes coffee doesn't come back. Um, there's not the big gaping openings on the shelf because they've kind of moved around what they have to cover those spots. Um, I tried to get uh, a cover for my phone. you think that'd be easy. Wasn't so easy. I only found one in an AT&T store. But places like, you know, Walmarts and, you know, the targets of the world that you normally expect them to have basic stuff. There's a lot of empty spots and that's uh, a little bit of the system breaking down with us in China and the supply chain. Um, cars are not being built. 
because of chip shortage. So yeah, this is just one little piece, people not going back to work because of unemployment, but it's all those little pieces not fitting together and not working quite right. The supply chain, the, the people change, the, the market system. Um, the momentum can go south just as fast as it can go up it can come down. We're still pumping incredible amounts of money into it and Biden wants to pump another 4 trillion. Inflation's up to pushing 4%. Republicans, and there are good Republicans and good conservative Republicans that are really nervous about pushing another 4 trillion into our economy. I'm nervous about it. Do I think we'd be better off if we got both of us working together to figure that out? Yep. Um, Biden's trying to do a lot and he's trying to do it fast because most times in the midterm elections you lose your power so I, I think the U.S. is still in a precarious position partly because of Trump partly because we've created an information system that deliberately biases people, media, Facebook, media. And we've neglected the have nots in our society for way too long. Maybe throwing a little racial prejudice on top of that. But this is the ancient Texan looking at the news of the day um, and trying to put it in context, what it what it means, at least from my viewpoint. Well, I'm going to give this a run of you know doing my daily comments on the news and see if there's a uh, audience for it. We'll try it for a while till I get tired of it. If it takes off, I'll keep going. If it doesn't, we'll try something else. It's my podcast, and I kind of do what I want with it. This is the ancient Texan though. Um, let's hope America becomes better from the pain we're going through now, that we learn something from it. That's not a guarantee that that's gonna happen. But this is the ancient Texan wishing you a good day and a stronger, kinder country. Namaste.